What's going on, you the tube? I am giving you guys this title right now to let you know that this video has some triggers. Mm -hmm. I am I am a little extra cussy in this video, so if you are sensitive to language, don't do not watch this video. Number two, I'm going to be discussing anxiety, depression, suicide, and um, and and death overall. It's not like this video is not all that. I don't want you to think. Oh my gosh, what am I watching? This is just some things that have been going on in my life and things that I have seen on the internet. And I am discussing them in a get ready with me fashion. So I just wanna let you know if any of those topics are trigger for you, please just feel free to skip this video. Wait for the next one. We will be doing a melt we, the collective we, as in the multiple personalities that I have in my head. <laughs> I will be doing the Melt Cosmetics 27 palette right away, like I filmed this and I'm gonna be doing that eye look soon. But I wanted to start this video with a trigger warning because there are people that are sensitive to certain things. So if any of those things are off-putting to you, you're having a great day, you don't wanna be downed by some of my story times, that's okay. We'll just skip for the next video, okay? Thank you. If you continue to watch, thank you. If you skip this one, no hard feelings. And if you wanna see my everyday kind of summer makeup routine with a lot of heavy content, heavy thoughts in my head, then just keep watching. Holy crap, it's been such a long time since I filmed like a video. So here I am. Um, I think I'm gonna do like summertime routine, get ready with me. That is my oatmeal beeping. I don't even know if I wanna eat oatmeal. I did an oatmeal face mask yesterday. I've already hmm. done my treatments and now it's time for sunscreen. And I watched Stephanie Nicole's video on sunscreen. By the way, my name is Hot Mess Ness, M-U-A. <laughs> but you can call me Vanessa or Ness. Ness is fine too. I watched Stephanie Nicole's video on sunscreen and I think I just left really confused. So I have this one that is like chemical and this one that is physical. So I do both. Maybe that's too much, but whatever. Uh, I put a lot of crap on my face to try to slow down the aging process. I'm not trying to, you know, you know what I mean. So I'm putting on the one that I don't speak the language first. And then I got this one in my Fit Fab Fun Box. I love this one. It smells so good and it's like a moisturizer too. Don't forget the neck, girl. Don't forget the neck. And that I spray my regular sunscreen on. And I never used to be a sunscreen girl. I was like, tanning salon, bake it up, and now I've got a giant hat. And then, you know, a little regular moisturizer on top. I did a peel last night. It was amazing, but I feel like all this stuff is already just seeping into my skin. Like, it's a sponge and it's like, I'm so thirsty. How y'all been? How you been doing? Uh, I've been, I've been funky. I've been in a funky, funky spot lately. I miss you guys. Uh, I'm gonna be doing a separate video on this today. This is the 27 palette from Melt Cosmetics. I was gonna take some pretty pictures, but I decided to use it instead. <laughs> Classic me style, proof that I am not a true Instagrammer or vlogger, because I would have been like, oh, I gotta take pretty pictures. No. No, 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 no. But for now, we're just gonna do some makeup and put some stuff on my face. I got a refill. Thank you, Pen. Oh, I needed it in my life. So I spray a little bit of my Sculpta. I'm all out of my Lucid. Kind of just keeping the moisture in people. I also like to use this little bad boy. This is from Pure. Who'd I see use this? Tati. I've had this for a long time. It kind of comes and goes, depending on what the skin is currently needing. And I'll use some Jouer Anti-Aging Moisture Primer. Eh, it's okay. It's almost gone, because I've like, you should use this, because you got it with your little set. It's like moisturizer. So if you guys have not been made aware, I did put it down below in one of my previous videos. My past couple videos have not showed my face or much of my face, at least not my face with makeup on. I just haven't been in the mood. 
to put on makeup or I put on makeup and I'm like, I don't feel like filming now. Um, I started a vlog channel. It's not to say that that's my new love. That's not meaning that that's 100% the direction I'm going in. I love makeup, I love beauty. But my channel is kind of at a spot and I know consistency is key. But you kind of wonder, what do people want? Do they want like the Jaclyn Hill response? Like, cause I keep seeing this in my head. She swatched an eyeshadow and she's like, oh my God. It makes me wanna like, jizz in her pants. You know what I'm saying? Or do you want like, oh, this is so pretty. It's a red brown. One thing is more exciting. One thing tends to be more authentic and it's hard to find your balance. What is your balance, you know? It requires collaborating with other YouTubers and it's just, I love doing this, but doing a vlog channel has been a little bit easier because I don't have to put on anything. I can just be me and it feels weird going on camera talking about makeup, not having a stitch of makeup on. It just feels a little, it feels lazy. So anyway, I started a vlog channel. That link will be down below. I know that's not for everybody, but I'm enjoying the additional creative outlet. I'm using the Bye Bye Lines Foundation as like a first cover up. I bought this because it was on sale at Ulta. You're supposed to kind of rub it in with your fingers. It reminds me of a BB cream. It does like how the CC cream, oh, little fucker, one of my lights went out. You're an asshole. Are we, are we okay? We okay? Yeah. Okay, so this is the Bye Bye Lines Foundation. Um, to me, this is like a BB cream because you can only build it up so much and you're still gonna see hyperpigmentation. So I understand why it was on sale. This was not a win for me. If you guys want like a review review on this, cause I feel like I'd have to, this is like one little half pump, right? For me to get coverage to cover up how I have this here, I feel like I'd have to use a lot and blend it. I feel like if you're into like the glass skin technique, this would be a good foundation for that. But that's not me, it's, it's not me. So I kind of use it as, um, they had a really great product. It was called Bye Bye Redness. It was like a foundation cream. This is like a, a good starter pack, if you will. I also have been loving this Instant Age Rewind. My only problem with it, cause you see I've used a lot of it, is toward the end of it, the concealer just kind of sticks down here. It doesn't go all the way up to the top. So you kind of have to like, and that just feels gross. And when I first started using this in the beginning and it was coming to the top, I was using a brush. I'm buffing it in, which is great. Uh, I'm sure I could use a brush and collect it on the sides, but it's almost over. I'm super lazy. I feel like this is great for those darkness, kind of uh, cover everything up before I cover everything up again. This is just what I do, I know. I know, this is what I do, odd duck, my, my, my style. And that's about all I use of this and I'm going through it pretty quick because I am using it like every day that I put on makeup. So I hate a brand new beauty blender. I like it to have a layer of gunk on it because then I get more product out of it. It's a new one, already unsatisfied with that. <laughs> if you've watched my vlog, you would know one of the reasons why I have been kind of like, blah. <sighs> Summertime is kind of hard because I have to entertain five children and feed them. So summertime is expensive. And a lot of times my work is kind of crappy. You would think that a casino would be popping in the summer, but mine's like your local hometown casino. I mean, they're building a new one. So they're trying to like up their game. That's another story. And I always wonder how, when is my YouTube channel eventually gonna get me in trouble at work? I don't know, don't care right now. One of my coworkers uh, passed away last week and you know, anytime something like that happens, you just kind of, you know, trying to figure out where you are on the planet. Anytime anything really funky happens and you're connected to it, connected to the person, connected to the people, to the person, like, without saying too much. Anyway, we all have worked together for a very long time. Um, we weren't best friends by any means, but we did chat here and there. 
but personal. I'm one of those people, like I'm not very good at small talk, so I can make people uncomfortable. I'm like, how are you feeling? What do you think about that? Like, it's too much for a lot of people. So I tend to, you know, you love me or hate me. For whatever reason, she liked that about me and I could be really real with her. She could be really real with me. So anyway, finding this out has just been like draining. Like life still goes on. You still get up. You still do all the things that you have to do because you have to do them but it makes it a little bit difficult to be, you know, peppy and I'm gonna get on YouTube and not depress the hell out of everyone watching, that kind of thing. Plus, I have been kind of trying to battle my own, I don't know, do you call it depression? Like, I've, I've had my own issues for a long time. I've always felt like I was dark and creepy and on the outside, I look like I might be one of the Disney princesses, but on the inside I feel more like the darkness from the Wicked Witches and gothic. I'm gothic on the inside and a glittery princess on the outside. You know, because I'm not going to wear all white makeup and that kind of thing. You know, goth aesthetic, if you will. But on the inside, oh yeah. It's because I have children, because I'm a mom, and they did not ask for my dark creepiness, I always have to battle it a little different uh, than some people. I mean, when I fall into my moments, which I feel like I have for the past two weeks, at least, uh, you'll, you'll see it in my videos, you'll see it, it's just like something's kind of off. But again, I can't lock myself in my room for two weeks until I get over myself. I have to force myself through panic attacks and stuff like that because my kids depend on me to go to work and make money, you know what I mean? By the way, I mixed uh, IT Cosmetics and Too Faced Peach Perfect. That's, I guess, my point there, is in my situation, as much as sometimes I wanna give in to my darkness, my sadness, it feels like you can't get out of it even though Somebody else might look at my life and be like, God, I wish I had that. We all do that. And you see a lot of that with like these big celebrities, right? That have recently taken their own lives. And as someone that struggles with that, you would think I would be more supportive of those people. But when you have kids, I feel like you gotta suck it up for them because a child, and maybe this is coming from my background, as a child of parents with addiction issues. I always grew up feeling like I was never enough. I wasn't enough for my mom to be clean. I wasn't enough for my dad to even get to know me. I wasn't enough. And then my mom would be okay for a few years. And you know, looking back, I know that was on her. I do know that. That was her own, whether you call it sickness, problem, uh, addiction, it, it wasn't my fault, but I had to live with it. I had to, you know, live one place for years, live with friends, live with, you know, other people raise me, then my mom would be, and that's all I ever wanted was my mom. So when I see these kind of stories and you could call me unsympathetic or whatever you want to say, but when I see these kind of stories, I get mad at those people. It's always my first reaction is to get mad because I understand that artist spirit. I understand what it's like to feel like you don't fit in or you are the only one in a room screaming and no one can hear you. I get that. I think more of us get it than, than people that don't. But the difference is, is it, is it strength of mind? Is my mind stronger than them or are they sicker than I am? I don't know. I don't know because I can give you a list of the medications that I have been on in the past from Ativan to Xanax to Prozac and it always made me feel like I was just floating, just floating. You know, I'm not going to self-harm today, but I'm not going to do much of anything else. And growing up, you know, was wanting to be an actress and all that. I had to access my feelings. I had to get to those places. So I understand why like Philip Seymour Hoffman maybe didn't take antidepressants, but instead he treated himself with painkillers and heroin. 
because you still feel like you can feel something. I get that. But where's this all going with my story? I don't know. I don't know. I just feel sometimes like I get it. I get what it's like to feel like that. But our babies didn't ask for this. You know what I mean? And sometimes life isn't all about your kids. That's why I have a YouTube channel. Yeah, my kids are in my vlog channel, but this is for me. But they still are number one. And if you have these inner demons, you really need to fight them harder. Get help. Try different medications. Get more help. Talk to people. Get more help. Because those kids are always going to feel like they weren't enough for their parents. And that's shitty. Because I remember what that was like. And maybe that's the difference. Maybe because of the way I grew up, it's kept me from self-harm. I don't know. Does any of this make sense? I know this just turned really, really dark and sad. But it's the reality of, where have you been on YouTube? If anyone's been asking. Although I do have a really awesome person on Snapchat, Miss Gypsy, who is asking me where I've been. Why am I just going in like this? I don't even know. This is Makeup Revolution. I was using C6 and they were all out and it was buy two, get one free. And I have my 20% off coupon. So I got C7, C5, and C3. I think C7 is good for the most natural. Let's see. I don't know. I just went in all crazy. Yeah, this is like just a little bit less than my skin tone. I feel like the redness is kind of popping through today because of my peel. I also realized that the peel I did yesterday, I must have a very sensitive skin because I watched a YouTube video on the Blue Radiance peel and this one girl's like, oh, it tingles a little, but it's, and I was like, my face is on fire. <laughs> Tears are streaming down my face and I run over to the fan and I'm like, ah, yeah. <clears throat> and so I can always, I mean, obviously, I put water on my face and it turns red, but I still can handle a lot of the acids and stuff. I think I'm gonna go in a little with C5. I'll just try them all. Oh yeah, I, I, no, this, yeah, C5. I like C5, C5 is nice. I used up all of C6 pretty much. I was like, this doesn't look empty, but I wasn't getting any product out. I don't know what I'm gonna do with C3, but maybe that'll be for the lighter times. So how are you all doing now that I've all just gone in with my um, really depressing, kind of judgy thoughts? I don't want you guys to think, like, my, I'm such an asshole. Because I didn't know what had happened to my friend, uh, I just kind of presumed first off that maybe she had taken her life, but that, like there's no proof of that. It's not like a letter was found or it, she just didn't wake up. So we, we don't know yet, okay? But when my best friend told me the story on the phone, I am such a jerk. Her brother committed suicide three years ago. And I literally said to her, and she's got her three nieces and nephews at her house over the summer. And I said to her, who does that? Who does that? You have kids. Hello, insensitive. And I literally had to take a moment from it. I didn't even really realize I had said it. And then I had to text her back the next day. And I'm like, I am so sorry. I am such an insensitive asshole. Because that, that was so insensitive to say. I mean, like her family has been dealing with the pain of losing a brother. And, you know, kids are left behind. And But it's still, I'm telling you, like me and my boyfriend have talked about it. And he's like, if you ever did something like that, I would hate you. I would hate you. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. I'm, I could see why, but I, I see both ends. I see both ends of the spectrum. I understand it, and that's why I get so like, try harder for the babies. This is my foundation. And sometimes I'll take a little powder, and then I go in with bronzer, so let's do that. Let's do that and maybe talk about something a little lighter and fluffier, okay? This concealer does crease on me a little bit. I hate setting too much because it's like, hi, Wrinkles, hi, how are you doing? So I'm gonna take like the, the lightest brush, I'm telling you, this was like the one brush that I, I had to have this brush. I literally tweeted about it and Niles from Beautylish reached out to me and I was able to buy it and it is not soft. 
This brush cost me $150. That's just insane. That started a fight. And the man found out about that. Oh, snap. This is NC25. I think I should have stuck with NC20. I don't know, I'm kind of this in-between part. I'm just gonna dust a little bit so that way I don't move around a lot. But I'm kind of okay with that for my summertime. Kind of okay with it being a little slippery because, you know, it's gonna melt off anyway. It was 95 degrees yesterday and I decided to take the baby to the park. She started getting weirdly red and I was like, we need to leave. We need to leave now. So I'm still loving the Chanel 10 Soleil Tan de Chanel Bronze Universal. I took two years of French and I still can't do any of it. So this is like my base bronzer and usually if I'm like summertime go-to, it would just be part of the foundation that I used and this. And then I'll be like, I'm good. Sometimes I'll brush through my eyebrows, sometimes I won't. So recently I've been interested in how the bigger bloggers work, how YouTube in general works, like some of the bigger people. So I've kind of fallen down the rabbit hole. It's, it's because of Shane Dawson, let's be real. I was really interested in what the hell happened at TanaCon. I didn't even know TanaCon was happening. I haven't ever been really interested in going to VidCon. There are only a couple creators that I've ever really wanted to meet. I went to DragCon a while back. And then when I saw the line to meet Jeffree Star, I was like, nope, nope, not gonna happen because we're not gonna have a well um, thought out experience. It's not like I'm gonna get to know him. I'm gonna stand in line for two hours. I'm gonna smile, I'm gonna take a picture. Mm-mm, mm-mm. And then I almost went to the meet and greet where he was at the Morphe store in Rancho because that's pretty close to me. And uh, I was like, no, I'd rather sleep. I'll watch a Snapchat stories. I've always wanted to, but I just, I'd rather go to like Creator Summit where I can learn more about making content versus meeting creators. Does that make sense? It's like nothing against meeting creators. I'd like to, but I don't know. Sometimes I feel like I'm a little, I don't want to ageism. Here we go in ageism. But I feel like I'm beyond doing that. I don't know. Maybe someday I'll change my mind. But if there was ever a chance to do like a more private meetup, like Jeffree Star is doing the behind the brush and it's a ridiculous amount of money. But if you pay the ridiculous amount of money, you get to do like a real Q&A and it's probably 150 people where I could be closer and actually feel like, oh, I'm actually getting to know something about you. That's different. I like real experiences, like social interactions where I could get gauge somebody instead of, oh, I got to meet Jeffrey after four and a half hours. He looks so pretty. I could definitely see how pretty he was at the first drag con because they didn't have it all closed off. I hear now they close it off, but I literally could stand right by and see him taking pictures. And I was like, oh my God, this man is stunning. And he never stopped smiling. He didn't look agitated even after all those hours of waiting in line. And even after Manny was like done, he was still out there meeting the people. That was all joy. I kind of deep and darken. Anyway, I probably know more about some of these people than most average moms because I like to figure out who the kids are watching. I mean, there's the obvious Melani loves Jojo Ryan kind of introduced me to PewDiePie, although I've kept watching him because I think he's funny and down to earth and he makes some really good points. And then I was curious, who is the guy that has the most YouTube subscribers and what is his content about? But he's, he's so relatable. Is that a little human? That's a little human. Hi, baby. How you sleep? You slept for like 12 hours. Hi. I'm gonna sit on my lap when I put on some blush. So I got the Shoei bl blush and I broke it and that sucks. Cause I, I like it, but I wonder if I jacked up the formula. And I always just blend up my edges. You got stinky mouth. So Miss Penn said that these were awesome. Rite Aid had a sale where it was buy one, get one half off. 
So I bought two. I'd like to get the lighter shade. They are awesome, by the way. I'm gonna take the rose gold and put it on with a beauty blender. And then also the champagne. I wanna get the lighter shade because I feel like the lightest shade, the white one, would be best mixed with champagne for my skin tone. I mean, these are both nice. I like them. I take my trusty amazing brush. Oh my gosh, I'm getting the bestie huggies right now. I love you. So that's how I do it. That's, that's pretty much it. You have stinky baby breath. You're not a baby anymore when you have stinky breath. Are you gonna beauty blender it up? She loves to beauty blender. Show them how you beauty blender. Show them how you do it. <laughs> Go ahead. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna put some eyebrows on. I'm gonna get her some breakfast. We'll be right back, you know. Right back to you. It could be three hours, but you know, we'll finish the video eventually. Want some oatmeal? That was literally like 30 minutes to do my brows and they're not even incredible. They're just kind of on. <laughs> so because I've already, spoiler alert, mentioned that I'm gonna be doing a melt eyeshadow video in a little bit, um, I have to go run the rest of my life, but this is literally in the summertime. I take some of my MAC powder and I just run it over my lids. So that way I don't have like the concealer creases. And then anything else that may be lifting a little bit, I can be like, oh yeah, right here. Oh, right here. No, this is from Bite. The mini one from Bite. It's kind of pinky, but I'm gonna take a little bit of Patrick. Then I'm gonna take some white Russian. Wow, pink. And, oh, this is glitter. Got it. it goes really good with your oatmeal. And this is times like this that I really wish I had my lash extensions because I'm telling you, it made such a difference. You could put on some BB cream, some highlighter, and be like golden. So I want to apologize again, guys, if this video was a little bit, I'm going to have to make sure I include a trigger warning in the beginning. If this was a little intense, but this is kind of what my life has been dealing with lately, this intensity. And I know we all go through it. We just don't always talk about it. And um, I wanted to let you guys know, those of you that have been watching my channel for a minute, what's been going on. I feel like I should have like a really clickbaity thumbnail because have you noticed there's a special little thing that happens on YouTube. It's kind of like this Shane Dawson effect and he ran around and he can save people's channels and get them going again. And so he's talking to people about being more real and authentic. And if I can find a picture of the thumbnails that I have seen lately, I will include it. But it's literally like all these big beauty and non-beauty, but a lot of beauty influencers like crying in their thumbnails. And like, I have to be real with you, I'm sorry. And some of it has like, like why did you put I'm sorry in the thumbnail? Like, yeah, you, they actually aren't apologizing for anything. They're just letting you know that they deal with depression and anxiety. And I feel like it is very real. It's a very real subject. But I also feel that social media glorifies it in a way or it presents it to youth like it's trendy and i feel like there's a fine line like you can talk about it so that there's awareness but you have to be careful because you can teach young people that having a bad day is depression or being anxious or nervous about an event is anxiety and there's a difference uh, i'm not a psychologist i don't really know the difference i've just I know that there's a difference. I'm not saying everyone has it and I'm not saying no one has it. I'm just saying there's so much of it being glorified that I don't wanna teach young people that it's cool to have this as something to talk about. Does that make sense? We create a lot of our own things. I believe that there's some things that are in our brains and some things we create for ourselves and it's the balance and finding out. And I think when you're 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 years old, if you were, if I was completely saturated with YouTube back then, <laughs> I already know these things about me. I'm 37 years old. I know these things about me. 
But if I was young and like, oh, I've been feeling different and it's like, oh, well, you're having hormonal changes, you might automatically be like, I'm depressed, I have anxiety and encourage your parents to take you to a doctor to be medicated when maybe you don't actually need those things. Maybe you're just having a hard time at the moment. So I hope that that makes sense. I don't want to take away from anybody that is in that boat, but I just don't want to overly accentuate it. I feel like YouTube has to, the big YouTubers should really be careful with that line. And right now it seems like the in thing to do to cry on camera and to glorify these issues that some of us struggle with and some people dabble in, but I feel like everybody has moments. So just be careful with the language that you use. And I hope that I got that out in a understandable way. Anyway, guys, coming up very soon, I will have the Melt Cosmetics 27 palette up, but this is the end of my get ready with me summer foundation thoughts on emotional mental issues and where Vanessa's been video. Yeah, that's what this video, how the hell do I title this? As always, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate each and every one of you. You have no idea. I love you. And as always, thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Bye.